So we're here at the SID Display Week 2019, and who are you? Uh, my name's Roger Barker. I'm a Product Marketing uh, Director for Arm Limited. And uh, right here at the show, you're launching the Mali D77. That's right, Mali D77. It's our new display processor that we're aiming specifically at the head-mounted device market. Uh, it's got some extra special secret sauce in there to uh, deliver a synchronous time warp, chromatic aberration correction, lens distortion correction, all in hardware in real time uh, to deliver a smoother experience using far less power and uh, delivering a better experience for users in time. So uh, these are some of the things that it, it uh, um, works to fix. Um, so a, a synchronous time warp, lens distortion, uh, we're able to compose multiple layers, up to four VR layers at, uh, at one time. I have to move out of the way. Yeah. And so uh, all these have never been done before in this kind of way that you're doing it? That's correct. In, in, in the past, this has all been done on the GPU. Uh, GPU needs lots of uh, horsepower to actually carry this out at high resolution, at high frame rate. And high horsepower means it's high cost because it uses a lot of power, uses a lot of energy, and it needs very expensive GPUs to, to handle that at a high performance level. So um, this stuff, those algorithms have existed before, but they were just done on the GPU. They've not had a dedicated IP to that's, kind of that, accelerate that's this? That's correct. So that people have slight... They all have their different variants on the algorithms, but we've developed an algorithm that can run in hardware, and we can we can do that in a single pass through the display processor, which which enables a far better experience. And uh, so that means it's going to be part of the Mali IP, or it's like one of the part of the GPU. It's it's uh, it's it's a part of the Mali display processor. So the Mali display pro display processor should be used alongside something like the Mali GPU. Uh, alongside video, alongside CPU, so we have a, a whole multimedia suite, so we can provide all, all the components, or for people who don't use our products, they could still use our display processor. So, um, ARM is like uh, really good at getting lots of different IPs in there, right? And the, and the yep. SOC, there's all these different um, things going on, there's, uh, uh, and it's been a while that uh, ARM has been doing the display part two. We've been doing this for about six years now. Um, we bought a, a company called Evertronics, who are based in Poland, uh, in what, 2013. And we've, be, we've gone through about uh, four iterations of products now. And we've, we're now onto a new architecture, which we introduced two years ago, which we call Comida. And the Z D77 is built on top of the Comida architecture. Uh, is it also related with the Apical acquire, acqu acquisition? It's, it works with the, Ap the Apical IP called Assertive Display. So at this stage, we still have separate IP for Assertive Display and for the display processor, but they're optimized to work well together. So when we designed Comida Architecture, we or we'd already acquired Apical, and we were making sure the, all the interfaces, both hardware and software, was as smooth as possible to give a better experience. Uh, so. Um, AR and VR has been a buzzword for a few years now, yep. but is ramping up for the next level. You want to have, it, for it to be really, really successful, it needs to be huge resolutions, yep. huge functionalities, and this is really important for this. So that, this is what we're seeing, is that uh, past ex or the initial experiences people have had with VR haven't been as, as, as good as they'd like, and this has partly been because the, uh, I, the, the uh, processors weren't able to process enough bits at fast enough frame rates to enable a smooth experience. And we've identified specific areas that we thought we can improve in the display processor to offload the GPU, to allow it to spend more, more of its time, give it more horsepower to actually improve its uh, delivery of, of the experience goes to the display processor and then that manages that all the way through to the display. So when you talk about 15% overhead on the GPU performance, is that uh, the stuff you're doing in this IP? Yes. Uh, so as, as well as the 15% the, uh, the performance uplift, or performance freedom, I guess, if, if you like, we're, we're freeing the GPU to focus on, on what it should be doing. The other key thing here is, because we're, we've freed it up from doing that, uh, it isn't forever or constantly being interrupted uh, and having to switch context between uh, play, uh, developing the game, creating and rendering what it needs to for the game, and then supporting the, the head-mounted display. And that's the key part of this. We're, we're stopping it being interrupted so you can guarantee the, the 
flow uh, or improve the guarantee of the flow through the GPU and then through the display we can guarantee that we can hit hit the frame rate of the, di the target display. And you have some other uh, stuff you're talking about that you just did a long pre presentation and um, yep. some um, what's 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 uh, so the time warp about? So, so time warp it's uh, a, a method of reprojection to mitigate the display type pipeline latency. So this is the problem that uh, has happened in GPUs where the GPU hasn't been able to render the next frame fast enough for when it's due to be presented to the to the processor, uh, to the display, sorry. So basically what time warp does is is you 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 uh, take account of head movements, and you can reproject based on those he head movements the same the same frame in real time. In real time, so so basically this prevents the jerky effects of missing the frame that's created by the GPU. So when you move your head, instead of it being jerky, it's going to move inside the image yeah. in the direction you're moving your head. It, it, before the, you the, get image, the, the image will move much much more smoothly. There won't be the jerkiness. It will be much closer to the actual head movement that you're that, that, that you're making. So, so there are links between the sensors on the either in the phone that's in the head-mounted display or on the head-mounted display uh, device itself, where the, uh, the gyroscopes and, uh, and other things are uh, allowing you to work out the head pose, and that's being fed into the display processor. So the display processor takes care of that. The GPU doesn't have to get involved. The GPU just f continues functioning on delivering the game at as good performance as possible. Nice. And you're talking about the something else here so pre pre distortion we're talking about so typically when you're using a, a head mounted device you have some bottle top lenses between you and the display uh, to give you an improved field of view or an apparent pre improved field of view and if we go on to the next couple of slides we talk about this a little bit so if you have the rendered frame, so the, the top left frame there is the frame that the GPU is presenting, so it's nice and crisp, it's exactly what you want it to be. If it's fed through a lens, you'll then get an effect called pin cushion distortion, and you can see that the, uh, the, it's squeezed in from all the sides, and it has a negative impact. So to compensate for that, what we do is do the inverse distortion. We create, bottom left there, we, we create a, a barrel distortion, uh, which offsets the pin cushion distortion, and so when it goes through the lens, you get a, a good rectilinear image, which is what uh, what you want and which the, the uh, GPU originally produced. So do you have to calibrate this to every different headset? Yes. It, it, all every different lens? Yes, you so will you have to. Maybe the user could do that, or the, the manufacturer would do that? You'd expect the manufacturer to do uh, most of that, but most devices now have uh, have uh, levers and things so that you can uh, you can optimize it for yourself. You can change into pupillary distances, things like this. So part of what we have to do is ensure that within the firmware that we provide, this can be upgraded, uh, uh, not upgraded. This can be uh, adjusted by the user. Uh, and this is something that the OEM will have to do in their software as well. They'll create software which will uh, enable the user to calibrate it for their own use, for their own for, for their nice. own comfort. And you have some more things you're adjusting? Yeah. So, so one of the things on this one, the top left frame was, was the one rendered by the GPU. The bottom right frame is, is after it's gone through uh, the, uh, the distortion correction. But as you can see, it's, it's, it's not clear. It's still a bit fuzzy. And the reason it's a bit fuzzy is because of chromatic aberration. So as the different um, color channels pass through the lens, uh, they, ha they have different refractive in indices, and so they refract differently. So what we have to do is we take the same approach that we took with the uh, distortion, and we do the inverse of this before we pass it through the lens. And that means we get to a stage where we have a nice sharp image, which was the image that was a comparable to the image that was originally uh, produced by the GPU. It's because uh, in, in science, uh, what's called uh, uh, every color has a different, channel. what do you call it? Channel color, color, ch color channel, yes, so a, a wavelength. wavelength. So they're different right? wavelengths, yes. So that's what create chromatic aberration in every that's lens. That's right, that's right. Every lens so has every, this every lens will have that. And, and it has to be you always have software. to offset that. It, it, today, it tends to be uh, fixed in software. And what we're doing, clearly, we're, we're doing it in hardware. So we're uh, alleviating the GV, GPU from having to do it to make sure the GPU can focus on what it does best. And we can reduce the power requirements and increase the, the performance of the end device.
Nice. So you hear the SID Display Week to talk about all this, because yep. this is the mecca of the display industry. That's right. And all the AR, VR display makers are right here. That's right. And They're they all have to think about your solution and when they create the next gen devices. Exactly. What we want them to do is make them aware of what we're doing. We also want to be very aware of what they're doing and what their future developments are. So as we move forwards, we can get to a position uh, where, where, where we're able to cope with whatever they are bringing out as well. So that's that's the key activity for now. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe you have access to some of these uh, um, a totally amazing future AR VR displays. The dream is people need to like last year or two years ago. Google talking about they need they want to have huge amount of, like 18K displays yep. and with foveated and with foveated eye tracking, eye tracking, all sorts of everything things like this. Yes. And it's all more or less related, also, right? They, they're, they're related. The VR and the AR are, are different from the display perspective and the, the requirements are different, but they are related. And the things that we're talking about here will be important in, a, in AR as well. And clearly we're, we're talking to many different people to understand what will be required in the future, what is being required in the future. And we're helping to influence that so that we can make sure that we are able to address it when the time comes for it to be available. We're still a little way away from this in, uh, in AR in particular, but, but it's something what ARM will be working on through over the next few years. What's the other challenges for AR that's not in here? It, if, if you think about it, it's, it's related to, to light, it's uh, looking at transparent lenses. What do you actually really want to see on those lenses as well? Are you just looking for information? Are you looking for full, full video on there? Uh, are you wanting to th them to be adaptive? Uh, can you, can you uh, use a headset that doesn't look like a baseball helmet? Baseball helmet? Wrong one. Yeah. Uh, American football Cap, helmet. Yeah. Uh, so how about, um, is it possible to have this dream where you have somebody sitting over there in AR, exactly yes. on the chair? Yes. And that's part of this too? Yes, that's, that's where we want to get to. It's, we're a fair way away from that in, uh, being a, a, a common reality, but that's where we want to get to. All right, so thanks a lot for doing all these uh, technologies that the whole world could potentially embrace? That's, that's the aim. We, we just want to make it easy for people to use. So.